Welcome to the SOLIDWORKS 2021 launch webinar series hosted by GoEngineer. In this episode, we'll be talking about performance enhancements past and present. Your presenters today will be Ryan Cole talking about SOLIDWORKS CAD performance enhancements and Miguel de Villa talking about SOLIDWORKS emulation performance enhancements. Let us take a look at improvements on the CAD side of things. First up, installation should now take less time with the change on how the program is downloaded and installed. We can hope that the early days of one and a half hour installs are truly behind us, although figuring out what to do with our newfound time may be difficult. Maybe we can play around with some of the new other enhancements. The last few releases of SOLIDWORKS has put focus on graphics enhancements. This has continued this year with some updated functionality. If you are a user of occlusion calling, SOLIDWORKS has now pushed more of the calculations to the GPUs, making it snappier and less of a load on your CPU. Previous versions needed to recalculate the AO after any rotations of the model, and there was a slight hesitation before it popped back on. Now it stays on, and the hesitations are gone. Also getting pushed off to the graphics processor are silhouette edges. This means when your model is in hidden lines removed, it takes less time to calculate the graphics on the screen. It may not seem obvious at first, but this means there is a huge increase of speed in the drawings of assemblies. Like, really huge. Let's take a look. So we have a fairly large assembly here. We're looking at almost 8,000 components in here, and they're pretty much well detailed out. Normally I wouldn't do this in front of other people, but let's go ahead and check out the new functionality here. By tuning it on to Hidden Lines Removed, it's going to take a moment, and like I said, I wouldn't normally show this because this used to take minutes, if not, you know, not hours, but definitely minutes. Um, we can see that it actually popped up pretty quickly, and you are seeing a live rotation of it as well, too. This is no video editing to show this to make it look nicer or anything. The main payoff here, though, is this is the view that we usually have in our drawings. In fact, if I come up here and go Make Drawing from Assembly, we'll go ahead and just answer a few of the questions that we normally do. And we'll throw this on a B size at this point. We'll go ahead and put the first view in. And once again, this is something that would take minutes. And I'm talking five, six, seven minutes, depending on what was going on. And we can see here that it happened very quickly. We're not working with lightweight and we're not working with large design. These are data sets that are fully loaded into the system. And you can see that while it's not super snappy, it is way better than what I've ever seen previously. In fact, if I go ahead and hit escape to get out of this, we can go ahead and zoom in and we'll see that the graphics are catching up a little bit here. And it does look a little weird, but we don't have to wait a long time for them to snap to nice solid lines there. So once again, I'm trying to show this as live as possible and how as quick as possible and showing you exactly how this is gonna work out. For those that are holding back on older versions of the software, let us cover some of the functionalities that may not be new to 2021, but are newer. In previous new versions of SOLIDWORKS, we would get calls from the users complaining about how the data sets they were opening in the newer software were opening slower than in their previous SOLIDWORKS version. This was due to the conversion of files that needed to happen when opening them for the first time. It could increase time by 20 to 50% in some years. In 2020, the conversions are no longer needed and do not slow down the opening speed. This is especially useful if you have an integrated SOLIDWORKS PDM system, as it will not be required to update all the files in the vault. Another item in 2020, aligning with the enhanced graphics that SOLIDWORKS has been working on, is the speed at which the first view in a drawing is generated. This can be seen in the earlier demo, and as stated, this is something that used to take minutes, but has now been dropped to a few seconds, even on a complex and large assembly. As stated a couple of times already, SOLIDWORKS has been working on their graphics engine year over year. Starting in 2019, as a beta feature, the Graphics Boost option dramatically increased the rotation and zooming speed in SOLIDWORKS, and this is especially noticeable in large data sets. In SOLIDWORKS 2020, the Graphics Boost function was moved from beta to a real function. It can be found in the Options dialog under Performance Settings at the very bottom. This is not on by default, and you might want to double check it. Please ensure that you restart SOLIDWORKS after you turn it on to get it to start properly. In 2019, Pack and Go has also had a new function added to help you out. The new option to have Pack and Go search in subfolders has now been added. This will help get those pesky assemblies with all their reference files together easier. Last but not least is the addition of the progress indicator in 2019. No more questioning your existence when opening assemblies as you watch the spinny blue ring of windows spin around. Now you can see what is going on as it is loading, helping you understand where the software is at. 
This should also reduce the number of times you crash SOLIDWORKS because you weren't sure what was going on. Now you know exactly what is going on and can just patiently wait for the rest of the files to load. Finally, from the CAD side, a word of warning and a possible reason to update to a new version of SOLIDWORKS. If you are working with large assemblies in SOLIDWORKS 2018, there was a severe bug that caused massive slowdowns while working with them. This could be with complex parts or simple prismatic parts, but after a few hundred components were visible in the assembly, mating started to take a dramatic hit when adding them. The good news is that of, as of SOLIDWORKS 2019 Service Pack 1, the mating issue in large assemblies was resolved. Add to the fact that the graphics boost was added in this version as well, and you have a huge reason to update. That's all I have for now. I'll pass the baton on to Miguel. Take it away, Miguel. Over the past few years in SOLIDWORKS simulation and flow simulation, we've seen many improvements to features both old and new that enhance their speed, utility, and efficiency in your day-to-day -day workflows. Here's a few of our top picks for performance enhancements to features that, while not necessarily new, are now better than ever in SOLIDWORKS simulation and flow simulation. In SOLIDWORKS simulation, we've seen added capabilities to existing study types, features, and diagnostic tools over the years. And this upcoming year, 2021, focuses the most on improved overall performance across all stages of a study, from meshing to solving your studies. The topology optimization study was introduced in SOLIDWORKS 2018 in Simulation Professional and Premium. It initially allowed users to optimize the shape of their part during a simulation for criteria such as the best stiffness while minimizing overall part mass and then allowed them to export that optimized shape as a smooth mesh body for manufacturing. In 2019, this type of study was further enhanced by providing users with the ability to optimize for additional design constraints such as minimizing max stress, staying above a minimum factor of safety, or staying above a particular frequency. These goals, combined with other study features such as manufacturing constraints and symmetry conditions, allow users even greater control over how they want to optimize the shape of their parts. Virtual connectors are a great feature in simulation that allow you to simplify your studies by omitting the model geometry of fasteners and other similar components from your mesh while retaining their influence on your setup. Starting in 2018, you can now select up to 10 coaxial faces when defining a virtual pin connector. No more having to create a virtual pin for every single face pair. And in 2019, this functionality was extended to work in nonlinear static and dynamic studies as well. If you analyze stress in your simulation studies, you should already be familiar with the Stress Hotspot Diagnostics tool, which can find and highlight stress concentrations within your design. Now this tool can go one step further by analyzing any discovered hotspots for if they are stress singularities by automatically applying local mesh controls to the affected geometry and examining them for stress divergence. Up next, in 2021, we'll be seeing a lot of overall performance enhancements to the automatic gap detection in your models when setting up contacts, as well as the overall accuracy of these component interactions for curved or complex surfaces. Contact conditions are now more efficiently enforced when the gap is within a maximum characteristic length of the participating model geometry as defined in the component interaction window. The blended curvature measure option has been available to simulation users for many years now and has provided a good balance between the standard measure and curvature based measure when generating high quality meshes for complex geometry. Now the blended curvature measure is faster than ever before and is far more efficient at taking advantage of multiple cores when meshing multi-body parts and assemblies. As a result, it's now also the default meshing option within simulation. Likewise, with flow simulation, we've seen several enhancements that improve the speed and efficiency with which users can create more complex setups, find and calculate desired parameters, and share project data between setups. When it comes to running studies on multiple designs, often we find that many aspects of a study 
are extremely similar to ones that we've done in the past. Starting in 2018, flow simulation can now save you time by allowing you to reuse boundary conditions, sources, and goals between different models by exporting them to a template similar to how one might use sheet formats to save time and ensure consistency between drawings. Also in 2018, minimum and maximum values can now be easily shown on your cut and surface plots as callouts by simply right-clicking on the desired plot and toggling them on. In general, goals are extremely useful in a flow simulation study for tracking information as well as to act as convergence criteria for the solution. Starting in 2019, they can now be automatically generated and linked to the reference geometry as you define your boundary conditions. As an added bonus, because the two are linked, now removing or suppressing the boundary condition also removes and suppresses the goal with it. finish this discussion on enhancements to SOLIDWORKS simulation and flow simulation, there will be some terminology changes for all SOLIDWORKS simulation users in 2021. For example, contacts are the term for contacts in SOLIDWORKS 2020 and before. Now in the UI in 2021, it will be known as interactions. Contact sets before will now be known as local interactions, global contact, will now be called global interaction. A few other examples of these changes are that incompatible mesh will be now known as an independent mesh. A compatible mesh will now be called a continuous mesh. These changes in the UI are to bring SOLIDWORKS more in line with industry standard terminology and phrases.